So here we're looking at the bovine hind limb. Here we can see the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, the gracilis, a little bit of the sartorius, semimembranosus, the adductor, and then here we see the quadriceps femoris with the vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, vastus medialis, and rectus femoris muscles. Okay, if we come over to the lateral side, once again our biceps femoris here, overlying our gastrocnemius. Here we see coming out from under that biceps femoris is the common peroneal nerve. It's going to branch into a superficial branch, which as we see here is going to come down and be our main supply to the dorsal aspect of the digits. Then we have deep branches coming in to innervate these muscles on the cranial aspect. Our tibial nerve is right here. Tibial, same as in the equine, is going to branch into a medial and lateral plantar. And those are going to be responsible for the plantar aspect of the digits mostly. Muscles here. So remember in the equine, this more cranial muscle was the long digital extensor. But in the bovine, it's the pronius tertius. So it's actually a muscle in the bovine. Okay. We can see here the cranial tibial sliding under here. We reflect this this way, then we're going to see the, the long and the medial digital extensor muscles. We need to make sure by tracing out the tendons which is which. Okay, You can notice that with the long, just as in the equine, we have the short digital extensor muscle attaching to it. Okay, Medial digital extensor tendon we can trace all the way down to the medial digit. And here, once again, is a little bit of that cranial tibial muscle. Now, unlike the horse, the, the bovine also has the pronius longus, just like in the dog, very triangular shaped, okay? Coming down to here. Here we have our lateral digital extensor. This tendon comes down here, and then we can trace it all down to the lateral digit. So remember, these muscles are going to primarily be flexors of the tarsus, and if they have digit in the name, they'll also be extensors of the digit. Then we have deep digital flexor muscle here. Just as in the horse, that superficial digital flexor is kind of buried. Okay, We don't see that twisting tendon. It's not quite dissected out here, but we still have that same twisting of the tendons so that the superficial comes more superficially. But in the bovine, we see that there's actually two heads to the superficial digital flexor muscle. Okay, Here we see more of the deep digital flexor, and this muscle coming across here is the popliteus. Okay, circulation is going to be similar. We'll have the femoral artery coming down, giving off the distal caudal femoral, and then becoming the popliteal artery. Popliteal artery will branch into a cranial and caudal tibial. Cranial tibial will be coming along here. That's our main supply. Cranial tibial, just as in the horse and the dog, when it gets to the tarsus, becomes the dorsal pedal. It's going to give off a perforating tarsal branch and then continue in this groove between the, the third and fourth metatarsal bones as the dorsal metatarsal artery three. Okay. As it gets more distally down here, it'll give off a perforating metatarsal artery, continue as the dorsal common digital artery three. It's going to join the plantar common digital artery three. 
and then they form what's called an inner digital artery. From that inner digital artery will come the axial digital artery three and four, which will go to main supply to each of the digits, very similar to the front limb. Okay, this hind limb, this plantar digital artery three is primarily coming from the saphenous artery. So here's our superficial digital flexor tendon, our deep digital flexor tendon. We're going to see just as in the front limb, portions coming off our inner osseous muscle and joining that there. Okay. So basically that distal hind limb is very similar. And as I said, we're going to have the tibial nerve doing primarily the plantar surface and the superficial peroneal doing primarily the dorsal surface of the digits. And that is all.